going to continue the conversation around this alignment of the organization. I'm going to be honest, it's a rare day where I go back and listen to the whole damn video. Last week I did because I got some questions. I got some comments, one in the Facebook group that we're actually going to address today and got them elsewhere. And I was wondering how in depth I went in that video. I went pretty in depth and I realized it's a 14 minute video. So what I want to do is I, I want to take this one comment and do a very short video and start stepping this out and talk about this alignment of the organization. If you go back and you, and, and I'm, no accusations because I have the least amount of patience of anybody you know. But if you have the patience and sit through that 14 minute video and even maybe sit through some slots and be willing to commit maybe 20 minutes to it or 25 minutes, all this stuff I'm going to talk about today is in their higher level. And I really think the higher level is really important. So if you blew over that, if you blew over that and you're thinking, well, but how do I do it? How do I get in the weeds to do it? You got to understand that stuff first. So go back, watch that video again, take some notes because the further it goes, the more I talk and it actually comes out of the weeds. It starts high level, goes into the weeds and then comes back high level. Okay. So I would encourage you to watch that again, but yet I'm going to do answer one question and break this thing down into parts and just do one part today. Okay. Now I'm going to share my screen real quick. Why do this? So here's the comment I got in the Facebook group. The most challenging part is translating this alignment. So the alignment of the organization that I talked about in the business to everyone involved. Totally agree. And remember, when I talk about this stuff, I was a good 10 to 12 years into my business before I started doing this stuff. You know, coming from this place of not doing it and then slowly seeing it come together and now reflecting and then seeing it in so many different businesses in so many different ways. Yeah, now I can talk about it. And what I probably do is not stop and explain it well enough. So the most challenging part is translating this alignment in the business to everyone involved. This is your first step. If you want to be able to get everyone in the business involved and aligned in the organization, you start with what does a successful patient's journey look like? Now let's go deeper. All you need is one happy patient from each of your marketing resources. One happy patient from anywhere you get your patients from, from doctor's referrals, from website, lead forms, from Facebook ads, from Instagram ads, word of mouth referrals, whatever it is, take all of those avenues and find one happy, satisfied paying customer. And what you're going to do is you are going to, if you, if you can, you're going to sit down with them and reverse engineer their journey in your business. Because you've got to reverse engineer this. If we look at it from step one, it's hard to do, right? We control the process, not the outcome. But what we can do is leverage the people who achieve the outcome, right? Right. They move through a journey within the business. They spent their money. They arrived for their visits. They only canceled, you know, one or two times. They didn't drop off. They didn't no show, right? So this is someone who reached that outcome that you desire. Well, we can't control the outcome but we can control the process. So now what I want you to do is take successful people who achieved these outcomes, who completed a course of care, who completed a journey with your business and reverse engineer their journey. Now, what I mean by this, let's get in the weeds and let's be specific, is I want you to try to get them and understand, because again, this is where you got to put in the work to set up the good questions. You don't want to say, how was your journey, right? You got to say, you know, you got to say, and you can't just keep going. What happened next? What happened next? What happened next? Right. You want to have a conversation with them, but I would start from the beginning. Right. So, you know, so Bill, you heard about us, you came through our website, right. And you filled out a web form. So what was it you saw on the website that got you now, mind you, all right, I started back here, but I'm, trying to get his brain going, right? What is it you saw on the website that got you to fill out the web form? We're starting to map out this journey. Step number one is he got to your website. If you want, how'd you find our website? Bring it back another step. I was looking for a solution for low back pain and I found your website. 
the next best question would be, what did you search? Cool. And then you got to the website. So what did you see that got you to click on the web form? What convinced you to fill out the web form? And then you might say, because you might know too, right? Okay. When you saw that first email response, right? What did you do? You need to do this, my friends, because by the way, you're mapping out all these touch points. So we're get everyone involved. Well, right now, the person building out your website and making your website decisions is the most important person. You know, again, like I said, you want to reverse engineer the journey. You want to know where they started, where they got from. So you could start saying, okay, what happened before? And some of this stuff you can answer on your own. I did this in my own business, right? When I used to sit down to call people who were either happy or mad, I looked at their journey. Right? When did they schedule? Who'd they schedule with? Did they arrive for all their visits? Did they pay for all their visits? How often did they cancel? How often did they no show? So before I ever got on the phone with a happy or unhappy client, of which I did a lot of, both of them. By the way, the happy people are way underrated. We spend so much time trying to get new business. We spend so much time building out bullshit customer service programs for unhappy people. We forget about the fucking happy people. We need to focus on those happy people, then worry about the people who fell off. But the people who fell off don't tell you anything till you understand the journey they were on. So take these people, maybe take them back to the beginning a little bit, do your homework, and then start asking them questions. And if you want to start from the beginning, and then so you call, you know, and then uh, someone called you. Yeah, do you remember who called you? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. You don't need to know the details of the conversation. You need to know their experience, their emotions. So what happened when we called you? Well, they were friendly and, you know, they really made the call about me. Cha-ching, right? Okay, cool. And then you decided to schedule? Yeah. And then you heard the price? Yeah. After you hung up the phone, do you remember what happened next? You may know they got an email or two. And then if they don't, you could ask them about those emails. If they don't remember them. Remember, we're asking them at the end of their journey too. Could be a thing that we need to focus more on them or we don't. By the way, I'm just building this out here every step, this patient's journey that you see here on the screen, right? And then I asked them, okay, you know, and then, okay, so you were told it was going to be $230 on the avowal. So days are going by. What's going through your head, by the way? You, maybe you know they've never experienced physical therapy before. They've never experienced your dental program, your Cairo office, whatever it is, right? whatever kind of healthcare practice it is, right? Because I would start to break them down as, is this someone who knew what they wanted from us? Is it someone who was told that what they would receive from us? This is how we get everyone involved, right? Because then we talk about the first phone call. Well, they made it about A, B, C, and D. And then they told me the cost. And you're like, whoa, who took that call, right? And this is the front desk's role in making sure there is organizational alignment in your business because they're preparing this person to arrive and pay that $235 and meet their expert. I don't care what your business is, meet their expert. So what happened when you arrived? What about the paperwork? What about the greeting, right? What about the wait? What about when your provider greeted you? What about your first visit with the provider, right? And then taking them through this journey, you got to document this whole journey because what you're going to see is all the touch points, everybody that needs to be involved. And by the way, if they start talking about your physical space, wasn't clean, right? The chairs were uncomfortable, right? Then we talk about how maintenance is involved in organizational alignment. You must understand this patient's journey. And so instead of just saying, you must understand this and then go and go do it. I just gave you an example. Find one happy person from every possible input into your business, every lead source, and talk with them about the process they went through. So again, we're applying this. We don't control the outcome. We control the process. Well, I'm going to take everybody that achieved the outcome we desire, completed plan of care, spent $1,000 with us, whatever it is, bought a pair of frames, right? Had whatever dental work done, whatever they are, because they reached that desired outcome. So what was the process they went through? And then we want to keep reproducing that process. I always say this line, and I'm not exaggerating. You only need one happy customer, one happy client, one happy patient. 
if you then sit down and break down this process and where did they come from? Because what else you may want to find, you may just figure out that, you know what, we just need more of these people with this mindset. Well, if you talk them through this and they tell you what was important to them, this is why don't get, don't get caught up in the objective measures in this conversation, get up and get caught up in the emotions they share. Because that's who you're going to direct your marketing at to bring more people into your business, into your system that are going to be easier to move through the process and have an increased likelihood of achieving that outcome you want desired. And I'm going to tell you this, your team's going to enjoy working with those people more better, right? So we get the web person, the marketing person designed around this alignment in the organization. We make sure the front desk is aligned around the conversation that the web people put together that this ideal client is expecting. The emails align, arrival aligns, your provider conversation aligns, the evaluation aligns, the follow-up conversations align. We find out what things are valuable to them. We build this into the website, into the conversation, right? This is how we get right? Everyone in the business involved and aligned, right? This alignment of the organization. We have to understand a successful client, a happy client, a happy patient, a happy person's journey within our business from all the separate lead sources. This is key. This is what's missing, my friends. People just look at one happy client. I'm like, but you got people coming in through four or five resources, through your website, through Facebook ads, through word of mouth referrals, right? We got to understand that process. By the way, the front end of that's different, but once they get on the phone or once we move them off of that initial contact, it really niches down to the same thing. So we're not creating five, six, seven different experiences. Do not get me wrong. But we got to understand all, we build out all these entry points and we fuck up the entry points. And then we blame marketing. Then we blame our team. I'm like, no, you didn't understand that these first two or three steps are unique to this person coming in this way. And in order to move them through this process and reproduce it over and over and over to increase the likelihood of the outcome, the result you desire, we need to handle these first three steps differently here here and here until we get to this point, then magically it, niche, it, it narrows down and it's all the same, right? Maybe it's a rival or something like that. Could even be the step before the welcome call, the appointment reminder, right? Whatever it is, the email before they arrive. Okay, this is how we get the team and the translation. Until we do this, we won't understand each person's role in client success, patient success, right? So the only way we can get the team aligned from it is understand that journey of one successful client and go, okay, this was the web, this is the marketing person's role. This was the web person's role. This is the front desk person's role. This is the face of the company's role. This is the provider's role. This is maintenance role. Maybe now we start scheduling carpet cleanings once a month. Seriously. These are all how everybody comes behind, sorry, together in the organization and gets aligned around patient success. Boom. Comment below. Tell me if this was helpful. Tell me if it wasn't. Cheers.